So no, it's not the beginning of crypto summer. Um, it's a short squeeze, a good old fashioned short squeeze, both in the equity markets and the crypto markets. Uh, everybody was, you know, getting short towards the end of last year. I mean, it was just, it was a horrific market, right? Bonds had a horrific market. Stocks had a horrific market. Crypto had a horrific market. Everything was negative. And what happens when everything's negative, people start selling for tax purposes towards the end of the year. Then what happens is you have to wait 30 days uh, for wash sale rules. And then you can buy these things back. And so what happens, it used to happen all the time, Giovanni, in January. So everyone would do their tax loss selling in December. They'd wait their 30 days. And sometime in January, they would buy these assets back and you'd get this big move in the things that had done the worst the year before. What I'm trying to say is big short squeeze, hugely overbought, hugely overbought. Bitcoin's as overbought as I've ever seen it. That is not a condition to start a long-term bull run, right? That's a condition for short-term weakness and uh, kind of a retracement and then the start. But the pattern we need to look for, and we, we talked a little bit about this last time, is even though there's chop in spring, what you're looking for is a series of higher lows. Now, you like higher highs too, but that's not as important as higher lows. If you keep making higher lows, that means there's accumulation pressure in the market. And I think, you know, we're going to be range bound in this, call it 20 to 24 range for a while. Then we'll be closer to that, that summer period. And I think that's just time, place and events, April-ish. And again, seasonally, Q2 and Q4 are the most positive for Bitcoin. So it's setting up to have a pretty nice move uh, April, May, June this year. I think zero chance they cut rates anytime, anytime soon. The Fed clearly is not loosening, right? They're not tightening as quickly, but they're still doing QT. They're still shrinking their balance sheet and they're still raising. But the PBOC has unleashed a huge wave of liquidity. I mean, they are flooding their market and Chinese stocks are up a ton. Chinese markets are, are rallying. Um, economic activity is surging. And China drives liquidity around the world. So used car prices are now plummeting because there's more cars coming in. China's reopening, all that good stuff. So I think by the end of this year, CPI is going to be close to, it could be zero, it could be negative, um, month over month, uh, quarter over quarter. But, you know, trailing numbers probably around 2%. That's not a situation where you need to be tightening. There will be a tailwind, I think, for digital assets. The market is saying by the middle of this year, the Fed's going to be cutting. Now, I think that's too aggressive. I don't think that's going to happen. It's possible, certainly possible. But I don't think it's going to happen. What I do think is very likely, very likely, is the Fed signaling that, okay, we're good, but that will be interpreted as we're going to cut and then risk assets will explode again. Totally disagree because crypto markets, particularly Bitcoin, are very uncorrelated to stocks other than for very short periods of time during deleveraging. The only time correlation rises is when Bitcoin is being forced to be sold because there's too much leverage. There's not as much leverage in the system as there was. We had a big deleveraging. In the crypto market, I'll argue there's very little leverage left. Very little leverage left. So the, the idea there's gonna be a bunch of unwinding in crypto, not very likely. Now, is there still leverage left in in stocks? Yes. Could that deleveraging cause people to sell Bitcoin? Less. Why? Because they already sold. 
So now what we have is a holder base that's very different from the holder base of stocks and bonds. I, I think Bitcoin and equities are going to be very, very uncorrelated this year. And I think this is a big year for Bitcoin. The last phase of the bear market is the toughest part. My belief is we start out of that cycle a little bit earlier. I think the market always anticipates the halving. So if the halving is, maybe you're right, maybe it is March, April, but, but sometime in that, in that uh, Q, Q1-ish zone of 2024, nine months before that, is usually when the beginnings of summer start to, you know, the crocuses start to pop and the buds are. This year, there's not going to be a lot of taxes paid because last year was so crappy. So I think there's not going to be a lot of downside pressure in, in March, April this year. So my guess is we'll probably start earlier rather than later. We'll probably have an early summer as opposed to a late summer. If the halving number is 100, all right, uh, if that's the target. And then we back up from that. We say, all right, well, where are we today? We're at you know 23,000. Where should we get by the time the halving occurs? You know, could we be back to 50, 60,000? Yeah, that's a pretty good guess. Then as we approach the halving, we start to accelerate into the the target and then we hyper you know then we parabolic past it the fair value is 100k per bitcoin how close we stay to fair value is the question do i think we get there by the end of this year probably not but could be surprised right don't wait don't wait buy buy some today buy some tomorrow buy some the next day buy some next week Buy some next month. Don't buy it all at once. Pick a number, right? I say, you know, three to five percent, whatever the number is. If you're younger, that number can be higher. You know, I'm talking a three to five percent core position in Bitcoin, higher if you're younger. That's what I'm talking about. Now, beyond that, you wanna you wanna uh, invest in in Ethereum as a platform that builds out the infrastructure around the digital future. Great. Law of small numbers, law of small numbers says Ethereum will outperform, right? It's a smaller asset base. If there's a, you know, a bull market, it will likely outperform. And history tells us the smaller market cap assets outperform in bull markets. So if, if you want to own a core asset forever, accumulate Bitcoin. If you want to have a portfolio of other technology investments that you think have a higher upside potential, own some other things. Own Ethereum, own Avalanche, own um, Polkadot, own Cosmos. 